Welcome to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. I am Beth Cooper. I'm Stacy Earlywine, and we are in the time of year where we don't know how to dress. I know. <laughs> well, my advice to my kids is always layer, layer, layer. Layer, layer, layer. Yeah, you can wear a t-shirt, but you have to layer it with a sweater or a light jacket because you just uh-huh. don't know. Yeah, it was like it was funny this morning. I went and picked up, uh, picked up the kids because we've been helping out on Tuesday mornings and uh-huh. Tuesday afternoons. And... Paige was running a little bit behind. She's like, in the truck, there's Jack's lightweight jacket. I don't know if he's going to need. So little Jack had like on shorts, so then he had like on layers, and we got his jacket. And Yeah. Yeah, who knows what today's going to be like. I, I don't know. like the dreary. Yeah. I keep telling myself, April showers, bring my flowers. April showers, yeah. bring. But it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really think that it's going to turn to heat. Heat. And just boom, be hot. Yes. In like probably a couple of days. You need to bring that kid of yours over to my house and let him swim in my pool. Yeah. It needs to be stirred up. Well, he would love to do that. In fact, he asks every night. I need do that you think kid. it's warm enough to swim at Stacy's tonight? And I say, He's no. young. He no, won't die from it. it. He'll be fine. <laughs> well, he did it the one day, but I'm like, not. no, it's too cold. It's well, that was cold. a weird that was it a warm hot day for a few days. Yeah, that was a warm day for him. So it was, yeah, that didn't work up too too bad. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just kind of like crazy time. Mm-hmm. You're knocking down on weddings. I know. Yes. Yeah, so these are a, pretty. Look at these. Look yeah, at you. That's now, okay. Did you buy them like this or did yes, you? Yes, I bought I them gonna, already put together like that. I was gonna say I knew you <laughs> on clearance <laughs> at Walmart for like three ninety eight. For the whole, really? the whole thing, the whole cute little vase and everything. It's so cute. How cute are they? At our floors, Walmart. Yes. yes. Really? Yep. Mm-hmm. But see, some that people... was a, that was a couple of months ago. I bought I bought them from Malia's bridal shower. Yeah. Centerpieces. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably gonna take. It's about time for me to make a home goods mm. run. I yeah. like my home goods, and I'm probably gonna uh-huh. make that run. Mm-hmm. Not this weekend. I got a baby shower this weekend, but uh-huh. then I, and I have the kids again Saturday, and yeah. Um, but then probably gonna take off and go see Connor mm-hmm. over in Belleville, and and make, Home Goods, Hobby Lobby. I uh, like that they're right next to each yeah. other. Well, I, you know, I could get to I could get to a Hobby Lobby, so I won't waste my time at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, and, but and Saint sometimes Claire. Hobby Lobby at Saint they're Claire different. is it, it's different mm, than different. Effingham, and it's yeah. it's bigger and. I didn't even know home home goods existed. Well, they haven't always. No. Well, I mean, you know, like Paige but, was like, "Do you I, do you go home?" I'm like, "Where'd you go? Oh, home goods." I'm like, "I never go." She's like, "You never go to home goods?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a home goods. I think TJ Maxx kind of mm-hmm. gal. I love T. I love TJ Maxx. Like that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. One of my very favorite stores. Yeah. You know, my all time favorite store is Kroger. Of course. <laughs> I love me a good Kroger. But um, no, I love TJ Maxx. Yeah. Yeah, and I like their. I never like because like with clothes. When I buy clothes, I'm a Kato's girl. Kato all the way. Clothes mm-hmm. all the way. But but uh, like I do like, but I did go to TJ Maxx because they got some really neat. Mm-hmm. I like makeup and stuff from there, mm-hmm. and like I like all the home goods stuff. I like to go to TJ Maxx, and then we have a, there's a group of us friends that go, and we just throw all kinds of clothes in our cart, things that you wouldn't even think would look good on you. You need to go with us next time. We just like pile all this stuff in, and you're like, I don't even know about that. But then we all go in the dressing rooms together. And there's usually four or five of us, and we try on, and some of it is hysterical, and we mm-hmm. laugh until our sides hurt. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of it fits. And it's like, <laughs> I would have never even tried this on, but it looks great. And then I buy huh. it, and then I spend a couple hundred dollars on clothes. Yeah. Yeah. But their prices are good, and I, I like that. You lost me at try on clothes. See, I don't oh. even try clothes on. Yeah. Well, it, it's fun when you do it with a group. And you laugh at each other. Well, I might. That make, makes it more. I fun. might be able to make it fun is of entertaining. You. Yeah. If you can, if you can take it, you know, some, um, what's the word? Not like hate, but yeah. take a little bit of take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody's like, oh well, that is hysterical. That looks awful on you. Then if yeah. you can handle that, then oh, I can you handle anything. With us. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can ha- I can pretty much handle it all. Uh-huh. Well, good. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm not I just don't like to shop. You know mm-hmm. how I am. Yeah. I, I go to Kato's and I just like that's cute, that's cute, that's cute. They're mm-hmm. like, "You want me to start your room?" I'm like, "Nope." Yeah. I can I literally just put my hands in a thing and go, "Yep, that'll well, work." I don't have anything against Kato's, but I I feel like a lot of their clothes are not made for tall women. I have Probably a, not. I have a hard time finding mm-hmm. things that fit me right there mm-hmm. because they're just too short. But one day you'll start shrinking. Yeah. What are you about ten years younger than me? Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Got five more years. You're five gonna, more years. Yes. <laughs> you're gonna start shrinking, friend, and it's gonna go the other way. You'll okay. be just fine. Okay. Well, good. Until then, I'll shop at Maurice's. They seem yeah. to have a little bit well, longer. Well, I weights. think Maurice's is kind of high. Yeah. 
Well, they're low. It I'm cheap. I'm a tightwad. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing about Kato's is I go in, I go usually go like on a Monday because mm-hmm. they get new stuff. I mean, and it, but they're like they get new stuff in on Monday, Saturday, boop, that sucker. That that and even the even the beginning out cost of a shirt mm-hmm. might be seventeen, eighteen dollars. The mm-hmm. shoot next thing you know, you're getting it for five ninety nine. Oh wow. No, their clearance like what it's literally they clearance uh-huh. everything out weekly. Like what yeah. comes into Monday is clearance out on Sunday. Oh. I'm a cheap clothes buyer because here's the deal about clothes. They're all made at the same place. Uh-huh. I don't care. I don't care what you're buying. Yeah. I don't care what you're buying. I don't care if you're buying Walmart clothes. I don't care if mm-hmm. you're buying Gucci. I don't care what you're buying. Or what if they're all made you know, overseas? They're all made overseas, and they're uh-huh. all made in sweatshops. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. Actually, that's a proven fact too. Right. And I'm gonna tell you what. One time, I used to when I was working for Paul Mitchell, and we would go out to Vegas all the time. And I went into. I, I don't even know my name, brand. So first of all, I don't think Coach purses are cute at all. Yeah, I, I don't. I like used them. to be a Coach Purse fan. I'm not so much anymore. But yeah. not knocking it. If you carry a Coach Purse, some of yeah, them are I, nice. Some of them are overrated. I think I think they're all overrated. I think, and I don't think they're cute. Mm-hmm. And um, and then like and like so you're you're like I'm, I think we're like at, at MGM Grand and there's this mm-hmm. whole and it's Versace and Gucci and uh-huh. Coach and all this stuff. And walking into those stores is like walking into a rummage sale. Uh-huh. Ugliest stuff you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, but people flock But to they it. flock because of the name. Quit uh-huh. buying name brand stuff, people. It's stupid. Uh-huh. It's stupid. And that and oh, I remember one time when I used to watch Oprah. Mm-hmm. I used to watch Oprah all the time. Don't anymore. But I used to watch Oprah and um she did a thing and it's literally the exact same thing. They're mm-hmm. all made in the same sweatshops in China. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're just paying for a label. And it was, it's like, oh, because like some of the, like, I can't remember which one it was, but it's like, okay, their stuff is here and there's the knockoff here. Mm-hmm. It's like same material, same everything. They just put a different certain, tag on a it. A different label on this one, a different label on that mm-hmm. one. So yeah, you're getting, you're, you're, yeah. I never understood label people. I don't yeah. get labels. I am. La- I can be a label. A certain. I, yeah, certain not things. at all. Not, not at all. Not purses. Not clothes. Well, I want a cheap purse because um, I want it to match. Cheap purses. Cheap sunglasses. I want it to match uh-huh. every outfit I got. Uh-huh. I like a lot of different things. But uh-huh. okay, what's your label? Food label. Are you a food label? Yeah, I don't like. The- Jim's a food snob. Here's the thing. Since <laughs> prices have went up in the, gro- I'm a food snob too. Since mm. prices have went up in the grocery store, I have started buying generic canned goods. You have to because it's ridiculous. it has saved me. A ton of money, like mm-hmm. hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. So, but before that, I was really picky. Like, I really like my Del Monte green beans. Like, I didn't want to buy mm-hmm. generic green beans because they always have those little pieces of the mm-hmm. the hard piece. And you're you going to tell me you've never come across the, one of the hard things in Del Monte? Very, very, <laughs> very. Because I, I hate to break say it never. to you. I will not say never, but very, very rarely. I hate rarely. to break it to you, too, because Oprah also did a study on that, no, too. No, don't and ruin it for me. the exact same stuff that went into a Del Monte can uh, went into a Great Value can. Holy cow, I didn't know she did real journalism. She did. She did. When the when she first started out, she did. <laughs> same way with batteries. You and I will argue on batteries, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm a firm... <laughs> I'm, the proof is in the pudding in the batteries nope. because nope. my kids have went, we have purchased generic batteries and they last like a day, maybe. Then you buy Energizer. <laughs> I won't even, I, I'm even picky about which brand of battery. I will only buy Energizer. I will not buy the Duracell. Those are junk too. <laughs> it's Energizer or nothing. It's they really funny. do last a lot longer. Well, see, Jim's the same way with milk. I'm like, milk is milk is milk. No, it's not. I'm like, yes, it is. Here's the thing about milk. No. <laughs> okay. So oh, you can buy cute. in Flora Walmart. You can buy either Prairie Farms to per, like Prairie Farms milk, or you can buy Great Value milk. Yeah. Yes, I do believe there is no difference in the actual milk. Right. I think they come from the same big, huge whatever. But I feel <laughs> like because Prairie Farms is a local brand, well, basically yeah. local to our Midwest area, and sure. there is a Prairie Farms plant in Over only, only yeah. I feel like I support local jobs by buying Prairie Farms. That is true. So the only reason I ever buy Prairie Farms over Great Value is mm-hmm. because, well, two reasons. One is because I want to support local jobs. And mm-hmm. two is because I give Walmart enough of my money. Oh, I'm over and Walmart. And when you buy yeah. a Walmart brand of something like Great Value, yeah. they're getting even more of your, they're, yeah. they're getting a bigger percentage because that's their own product. Yeah. So. Who does the, save more? Because I usually, I want to buy Great Value. I usually do save more. I don't know who's. I don't that know. Is. I'll go with whatever's cheapest. But yeah, I don't know who that is. I don't do but name brand I just, things. 
I that but, being said, when when milk went super high, like over COVID, sometimes and it, you have to. Do I what you gotta did do. start buying great value to. because it you was just I couldn't afford to buy, I buy like five dollar gallon of milk every time. There is one thing that I do not buy generic of, and I the only thing that I don't buy generic, especially if like I'm cooking, I'll buy generic uh-huh. all day long, baking generic uh-huh. all day long. But if I'm uh, like. I, Dawn dish soap. Oh, that's a I, good that, one. Dawn dish soap, dish soap is about, because I've used knockoff. It does not work. No, I it like doesn't. Dawn dish soap. Sometimes at church, they end up with like palm olive or something. That's Somebody not good. brought in, I'm like, what? No. Like, it, if you're yeah. going to cut the grease, you have to have Dawn. I like Dawn dish soap, and I like that. I like the brief. Febreze fabric softener, oh, okay. or like that you spray over your blankets oh. and stuff. And I do like that. Those are about the only two things that if you drive by, if you look in my cart, those mm-hmm. are the only two name brand things you're going to see. Really? Otherwise, everything else is knockoff. I'm glad to start getting crafty though. Jim's catching on. Oh. <laughs> when he makes his homemade ice cream, he is specific about what he uses. Uh-huh. Yeah. But whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's my take on all that. Well, mine too. All right. You got okay. to kick this show but off. Close. You're gonna same. They're gonna end up. They're all gonna end up at Country Closet and Jackie's. Well, ca- Country anyway. Closet is really my very favorite place to shop. Right, right, because all these because people buy I name get brands. great deals, <laughs> and you get name brand stuff that is like super cute. And, and they wore once. Pay, yeah, you pay three ninety nine for it. That's right. You gotta love it. Yep. I'm not even sure which which brand are we gonna throw. Oh, this is a good one. I think is this the one I got up? Pull that up there. Okay. I thought, look at this. What this, is this this comes from a 1932 ad, that Life magazine ad that I like so much. Yeah. This said, the, this gift saves your wife. I love this. This gift uh-huh. saves your wife 200 hours of hard work a year. It's almost like a, what's those, kitchen maids? Oh, like look at this kitchen thing. kitchen aid mixer from yeah, way is, back. Yeah, this is called a kitchen kit. Oh. Did you know these things existed in the 30s? No, but I want one. Right? Look at this. And I mean, it's I crazy. I agree that a wife in those days would have loved this. Yes. This probably would have been a nice gift. It looks just like I had no idea. I thought, say the top two wives what? Um, let me see if I can read it. Two. To enjoy life more, slip this and in your husband's pocket. Oh, yeah, this ad. To enjoy life more, slip this ad in your husband's pocket. Oh. This gift will save your wife 200 I mean, look at this. All stainless, no metal, no all stainless metal, okay. no glass to break, no paint to chip, not just a beater, but a complete food mixer. Uh-huh. $24.95 uh-huh. with stainless metal bowl, flour sifter, juice extractor. Oh, that's cool. And the power gears are built in. I kind of want one. Attachment slip on here. This is the new Gilbert Kitchen Kit. Is the latest in latest word in electric food uh, fixers. Hey Ty, see if there's one on eBay, please. Yeah, by Gilbert. But yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's that's an awesome little gadget. I like it. And you know, back then things were built to last. So this yeah. puppy probably just I kept had, going and going. I had no idea. Plus, they, here's the other electrical. Uh, they had the penthouse toaster, penthouse percolator, the juice extractor, a drink mixer, a hair dryer, oh. a fan heater, but, an, aeros- an uh, aristocrat fan, and a hand cleaner. But those aren't attachments. Those no, are just those are other appliances. things that they make. Oh, okay. But who knew this Gilbert Kitchen Kit, that one of those things was around in 1932? I did not. Oh, you know, another thing I found out about that Life magazine? What? It's the original Life magazine. It's the very first edition. Wow. Remember that little Life magazine that yes. I got from Don Thomas? It is, and that's the very first issue of Life magazine. Wow. That might be worth something. It you probably is. Hang on to that. Yeah, but I couldn't believe it. And the, the neatest ads. But who yeah. knew, right? No, I had no idea. But I'm happy those housewives had some. I, and how much was it? 20 something? 24 95 I bet that was a lot, though. Well, in 32, it probably was. Yeah. I don't know. Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Gilbert, Gilbert Kitchen Gilbert. Kit. I well, like it. Yeah. And speaking of advertisements, we got to go. We got to go. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. <laughs> At your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville, you can count on experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. More than just your car, the Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville carry a large inventory of Napa products for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced associates understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa Know How at your locally owned Napa Auto Parts stores in Flora and Louisville. 
Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like Lacrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. We like technology at Flora Savings Bank. Here's what you can accomplish in our mobile banking app in less than 30 seconds. See account balances in your transactions, set up an account alert, make a transfer between accounts, get an alert text message about your transfer, pay a bill, turn your debit card off and then back on. It all happens in the palm of your hand with our free My Bank To Go app. Search My Bank To Go in the App Store or Google Play and give mobile banking a try. Flora Savings Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Welcome back to, by the way, with Beth and Stacy. I'm Beth Cooper. I'm Stacy Early One. I'm excited about this yeah. article you have found. I know. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about um, a, a family from Clay County that took a trip to Texas in a covered wagon. Oh, right there, you lost me. In 1898. Okay. 18. 1898. Do you have any idea how rough that would be? I cannot imagine. Anyway, the the, I can't either. the daughter she wrote about it and and mm. and had a lot of memories about her family. So mm. um, I'm gonna is this arena column? It, Rena did write about it. Yes, um, she got her, but it's actually from a, a diary that I have a copy of here too. Um, oh, from neat. from the fam from the daughter. She kept a diary. Now her name um, was. Uh, the daughter that's writing this, her name was Lola Beale Van Dyke. A Van Dyke. Okay. Lola Beale Van Dyke. And um, she was married to Sumner Van Dyke. Hmm. And, um, but this this trip is about the one that she took when she was young with her parents. And her parents' names were John Denny and Jane Kincaid Beale. Okay. Okay, now this family lived up by Horde. So they were Blair Township. Um, you know, Northern Clay County. The year is 1898, and they decide that they're going to go to Texas. Okay. Okay. So they basically spend all this time, like, gathering up all that they would need, okay? Um, they didn't want to travel by, you know, their by train or anything out there. They, they just had to do the wagon trip. Um, so they were going to visit her mother's brother in Bonham, Texas. Okay. So that's, uh, I was just getting, you know, cause like if you're from Clay County and it's the 1800s, uh -huh. I mean, I mean the, the country's been around for a hundred years, but still mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, the draw to, t you know what I mean? What? Yeah, it's not like, like we get see, news like we do yeah, now. No. They, yeah. So her dad, John Denny, and the other men worked weeks getting the wagons ready. So all of these, like there was a, a lot of prep work to do. So um, clothing, cooking equipment, mm. feather beds, comforters. Animals. Food that would not mm -hmm. spoil. Mm-hmm. So the wagon, I mean, it is, it does sound like a little house on the prairie. And it's, you know, not very long after the, the um, Ingalls's went west. But um, the wagon was covered with canvas over these really strong bows, um, bows, bows. I don't know which way it said for a wagon. But um, so then they had two horses that they were taking. The horses' names. <laughs> Let me guess. Uh -huh. Lucy and Ethel. No. Uh, Booger. Book <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Who? I don't know. I guess he was kind of a difficult one. Booger and Nellie. Those were the horses' names. Okay. That's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in the wagon party, she had her mom, her dad, her brother, two sisters. Yeah. And then herself. So there were six in that family. And then this other family went with them. They were the Meeks family. They were also from here. So there was Jesse and his wife. And then three daughters, three sons, and their nephew, Bill. Bill. Wow. Okay. Then um, this lady writing, the, the Lola, the one that's writing out her di diary here, her great uncle went as well. His name was Jeremiah Uden. So there was 15 people in all in these two wagons. So the Meeks family, 
they actually sold all of their possessions before they left Mm -hmm. because they were planning to actually make their home in Texas. Okay. And the thing about this story that blew me away that I didn't catch in the beginning is that this was a vacation. This wasn't, we're moving. This is, we're going to take this wagon trip. trip. It, like they, we'll be back in a we'll year and a half. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so they, yeah. So I'll just tell the story. So okay, they were going a long now time. you've lost me. I know because nobody you, went on vacation back then. These guys did. These guys were like, yeah, I'm going to go see my brother. I'll be gone for six months <laughs> or however long it took. I don't know. I can't remember. We'll figure it out at the end. But they left on April the 28th of 1898. What's today's date? Uh, uh, we're today's filming the this. last. We're well, filming today's, this. Is there 30 or 31 days in April? The 30. There, today's the 30th. Today's the 30th. So, April. Yeah. So this was, you know, just a couple of days ago and a uh, hundred and some years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first night they took off from Horde and they made it as far west or they made it to just west of Flora. Flora. <laughs> <laughs> One day in, they made it to Flora. <laughs> so for those of you that aren't from here, between Flora and Horde, I don't know exactly where they lived at near her Horde, but it's it's about probably 15 miles. That's the great. That's okay. great. Okay, so... They camped near a schoolhouse, and it was possibly called the Yellow Blossom School. Have you ever heard of that one? I have not come across Me the either. Yellow Blossom School. Yellow Blossom School. Mm. So okay, so when they got to a place to camp, that meant they set up the t- the tents for sleeping, and they cooked their supper. So back in those days, of course, you could not buy bread. They did not have a store where you just bought like six loaves of bunny bread. Um, so they, the mother, baked bread for every meal. So she made biscuits in a large skillet with legs called a spider skillet. Now, where else have we heard of a spider skillet? Now, that sounds familiar. Because that, it's that, in all the uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder books. When they were <laughs> going west, that's what Ma cooked on. And I'm not talking about the TV show. In the books, like she had a spider skillet. And what that's what that they, is? Well, I think it's What a, is a spider skillet? Ty can probably Google a picture, but it, it, it's what I think of it is is a big cast iron pot, but it has little bitty legs on the bottom, so you can set it above your coals. Oh, see, I have... In your fire. Okay, wait, because I think I, t- I camp with one of those. <gasps> I'm basically Ma Ingalls when I go camping. Yeah, you are. Look at you. Heck yeah. Can we show that picture? Oh, yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Some people watching the show probably are like, heck yeah, we've heck had, yeah, my legs my whole we've had life. that forever. Like, of course, I know what well, that is. Well, mine's my legs aren't attached, but Jim's. Right. I need that long handle. Yeah, that's a nice one. That is a nice one. I hey, somebody a, needs to take a picture of that. I have a feeling. Send me that picture, Ty. There's probably didn't have a long <laughs> handle, but anyway. <laughs> so this cool, spider though. skillet was set on a bed of hot coals, and then hot coals uh, were covered. It was covered with even more hot coals to bake it. Right. So the heat wasn't just coming up from below. It was I've, covered. I've done that. I've done that. You I, impressed me. I have done that. I stop me this story right now because I'm gonna tell you something. Because I did that too. Like I have my my what's the the little kettle that I have my little Dutch oven, and then like you put it in there, and then you take the hot coals and you put it on top. So it yeah, I've baked biscuits. Look at you, you now, homemaker. Now, well, granted, my Camper? biscuits came out of a pop can, but hey. Oh. I baked them. That's okay. You did it. I did good. Good. Yeah. Good for you. I've never done that. So this is how they made their bread and their cornbread. And then they also had a huge pot which hung over the fire and they filled that with vegetables that they bought along the way and game meat. So you could buy vegetables like a a family selling. Well, I'll get to that in a minute where they bought the vegetables. So there would always be a young man from the group that would walk ahead of the main wagons and then he was the hunter. Mm -hmm. So he was ahead and he he would look for quail, rabbits, or squirrel. Mm. So that was their main fresh meat. Right. But sometimes they bought bacon from people along the way for 10 cents a pound. Wouldn't that be nice to be like, I just ran into somebody, he's got bacon for sale. Everyone would be like, yeah. That, that, yeah, exactly. Be, but yeah, we're mm-hmm. so spoiled now. Yeah, so they traveled 24 or 25 miles a day. Um, <laughs> That's how, and the, I mean, that's how, about as much as they can make in a day. 24 to 25 miles. So that's slow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the feed boxes for the horses were fastened on the back of the wagons. And then at night, the horses were just turned loose to graze, but they never left. 
They just stayed right there. They never really? went more than a few yards away. They, she you said. know, we're in Indian territory. I mean, so Booger was actually pretty Booger, nice. He Booger didn't is off. good, but uh, <laughs> but really, I mean, and this is not safe. I mean, there's Indians along the trip. I mean, this is not a safe journey, well, right? It's not a safe journey. I'm getting to the part about the Indians. <laughs> but it's vacation. It's Who vacation. Worry about Indians? You know what? I'm sitting the whole time you're sitting here talking about them traveling, and she's. I can't go anywhere without Twizzlers and Milk Duds. Yeah. I mean, I like pull in my big swing. Well, they didn't have snacks, but they didn't have snacks. They occasionally were. They found cra- occasionally they were able to buy crackers, and it was a real treat. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so after a few days' time, they reached St. Louis. And at St. Louis Whew. is the enormously wide Mississippi River. Right. And there's not that bridge ain't there, people. Yeah, no bridges. <laughs> the bridges aren't no there. No bridges. And it's not winter, you so don't you even can't cross think on about the ice. And so crossing. how do you cross it? Well, back then they had ferries. So you have a ferry. So it said that the children rode across in the wagons on a ferry. But okay. I don't know why she wrote it like that in her diary, like we children rode across in the wagon. I mean, surely the parents did too. Where else would he have ridden? If the whole wagon was on the ferry, why wouldn't the... Why would, unless I don't it was know. a weight. I don't it know. It was just interesting how she worded that part in, that in her little different. diary here. But um, So they, they made it across the Mississippi, and then they had made it 100 miles without any trouble, and they had only 900 more to go. And how many times, uh, 100 miles, and it took them how long? A few days, I guess. A few days. Get 25, 20, so you're talking, Yeah. Four. it took them four or five days to get to St. Louis. Uh-huh. Oh, my land, I have to stop there. Yeah. Well, then they hit the mountains. So then they have to travel through the Ozark Mountains on with these wagons. Think about that. Down. So they, oh my gosh. They forded some of the rivers. Now, all of this makes me think of um, Oregon Trail. Yeah. Like, I'm an 80s kid and I grew up playing Oregon Trail, and I actually still have it on my phone. It's a great game. I play it occasionally. Um, but on Oregon Trail, for those of you that don't know, like, you have to get on the Oregon Trail with a wagon train and you have to make it without dying, usually of dysentery. Never heard of from <laughs> Never heard of it. From this is the saddest moment in my life. <laughs> Never heard of Oregon Trail. I have not. Okay, and then you have to in this game you have to get to Oregon without dying, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay, but along the way you have these mountains to cross, you have rivers to ford, and in each river you have to pick: Are you going to ford the river, or are you going to pay money to buy a ferry crossing? And and some people don't have any money because you're only you have to sell pelts and stuff along the way to earn money. So if you don't have any money, then you have to afford it. But it's very dangerous anyway. Most people died in the game, but th- it's right through this. <laughs> I would I would have if I have because, a feeling most people died in real life. Well, because it would be inter- I can't wait. To, this story is fascinating mm-hmm, me. Yeah, you can talk just a little bit more. Then we're gonna have to take another okay, commercial break so, before so, you get into the Indians. Okay. Yes, I'll le- I'll leave. I have a good stopping point here. Okay. okay. So some rivers they forded, others they crossed on ferries, which hung from large cables that stretched from shore to shore. There were these big long cables. Okay, and it says one. This is a quote from her diary. One evening, when preparing to make camp, a Negro stranger rode hurriedly into our camp and warned the men folk not to stay on the east side of the river, but to get across as quickly as we could. What was the danger? Why was the warning? That was her quote. So, let's take a commercial break. Well, even back in the 1800s, everybody wanted out of Illinois. <laughs> We'll be right back. All right. <laughs> if you're looking for a loan for your brand new home, call Clay County State Bank. If you want to transfer money so your future will look sunny, call, call Clay County State Bank. We got checking and savings and bill pay too. And all in bank, you just ask a fee. For all your banking needs, we think you will agree. Clay County State Bank is the place you need to be. Clay County. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. 
at home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Play City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Tomorrow, some fear the uncertainty it brings. Some trust the promise it holds. At Grinnell Mutual, we are always looking forward to tomorrow, growing and innovating. So even if the plans you have for the future aren't the same as the plans that the future holds for you, you can be ready. Because we'll be ready, like we have been for over 100 years. Trust in that. Trust in tomorrow. Talk to your mutual agent today. Your local agent is on the square. Louisville, Clay County, Farmers Mutual Insurance. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Today we're talking about a wagon train trip that a family from the Horde area took to Texas in 1898. Vacationing the, in 1898. Vacationing in 1898, yes. So they had just been warned by a stranger, came into camp, said, do not stay on this side of the river, get across as quickly as you can, hurry to the other side. So off into the river, our teams waded, the water belly deep to the horses, the footing treacherous, and the water swift. I think this was somewhere in the mountains in Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, the horses sensed the danger and slowly felt for their footing, and at last we were safe on the other side. I mean, that alone, I read that paragraph quickly, but that had to be terrifying as a little kid. Like, you're in this wagon, you're going through this really fast moving river. Imagine. It's all the way up to the horse's belly. The horses are going very slow, and trying to find trying their footing. They're trying to figure it out, yeah. And you're trusting these horses... And you're just like, you know, what if it gets a little deeper in the horse? I don't know. Come on, they booger, get through. <laughs> Let's go, Nilly. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. So this is what happened. So we moved on up the mountainside to make camp where we could be safe in the event of rain or flash flood. While mother was fixing the breakfast, the rain came. Water rushing down the mountainside. Mother's campsite was washed out from under the old spider skillet full of biscuits. The kids were soaked as well as the feather beds and everything else. The river we had crossed the night before had become a raging torrent throughout the valley. It took days to get everything dried out. So they oh stayed there for days, but they just barely missed that flash flood. And that stranger that came in and yeah. was giving them the warning, it was get to high ground. Like yeah. this yeah. is going to change back then. They didn't have the national weather service. Right. It wasn't like, Hey, big storm headed your way. This is all going to flash flood warning. Nothing, nothing, you know, but people knew the land and they knew what to look for the part, and yeah. the feel in the air. And I don't know, people knew things. So, um, but back then, mm. um, when they would make camp, um, she said it was always a good time because there was always other people out on the roads or the trails and they would all come and visit. And she said, back then you never met a stranger, really. Uh, strangers were almost always, everyone was mm -hmm. good people pretty yeah. well. And you, um, it said men, women, children would come from miles around. And, um, whenever they saw a campfire, they would bring fiddles, banjos, and guitars. Sounds like Paul Ingalls. I it know. It sounds like a good time. Um, and so, uh. It said, a quote from her, Lola says, in those days, people were not afraid of strangers and enjoyed visiting and talking. Mm -hmm. hmm. So the children, um, Lola, her brother, sisters, and the other kids, they pretty well walked this entire journey instead of riding in the wagon. Right. So they would walk alongside the wagons. She, she, oh, Lola gosh. said the wagons were too tame for them. That was too boring. Oh, they wanted the really they wanted to walk. That's now, a boring trip. Just think about Jack. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Think about your your grandson Jack. Okay. <laughs> so just think about his energy level. I know kids have a lot of energy, but they're eating less food because they're yeah, they're probably getting three meals a day, but mm -hmm. it's not a lot at it's each not meal. Like, but yeah. It's not like today. So and and then they're exercising from like five in the morning mm -hmm. until like Midnight. seven at night. Who at knows? Least. Like constant exercise, mm -hmm. and and these kids just kept going. They like, just kept going. Oh, kids today are yeah. Don't, yeah. don't even get me started on kids today. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Jack would lose his mind because he uh -huh. doesn't know. Yeah. She said that they explored all the side trails and the roadsides. They chased flying squirrels, little rabbits, and all things, even tarantula spiders. 
So when they got closer to Texas, there was tarantulas. She said, when we would turn and run, they chased us. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) But she never got bit. And she said, can you believe that? How lucky. And we were all barefooted. So they walked to Texas barefooted. Pretty well. I mean, nobody. Yeah, I mean, you, you had shoes back then, but you only yeah. warm in the winter. Well, it, that's what I, I make these comments all the time. I am so glad I went. And Jim was like, you wouldn't know any different. No. He keeps telling me that. I still like, I don't like that reality. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but he's right. You know, I mean, it's like, well, you wouldn't know any different back mm-hmm. then. So it's just times were, gosh. Yeah. So here's an episode that happened on the road. Mr. Meeks, the other family that went with him, he accidentally drove over a huge ant hill. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And it me. was so big, it turned over his wagon and broke dishes, spilled flour and sugar, and all of the needed supplies were all spilled over on their sides. Then Lola says, we all laughed until our sides almost split. Well, I, that would be, I would I be thinking, like oh, my be, flour and sugar's gone. This is what we have to live on. And how am I going to feed this family? Meanwhile, everyone else is laughing. Yet, but it, maybe it was one of those those situations where you can laugh or cry. Yeah. So what, uh-huh. what are you going to do? There's not a so Casey's coming up next. The only person that didn't laugh was Mrs. Meeks. I, was, I doubt she was very happy. She, needless to say, rode the rest of the way. In the other wagon. So what happened to all the ants? I don't know. Did they come? But she was so mad at her husband, she wouldn't even ride in the wagon with him the rest of the way. So I feel her. I get that. I I would have been mad. He obviously wasn't paying attention. All right. So they said that they bought fresh eggs um, along the way from different little houses that they passed. And they paid five to ten cents a dozen for the eggs. Mm Mm-hmm. Fresh vegetables from farm folks along the way for just a few cents. Okay. So it'd just be like they passed by Stacy's house and be like, "Hey, mm-hmm. you guys have any zucchini? I'll you know, buy some if you do." I loved when you go when you're going down south. I love driving down south. Mm-hmm. You're heading, you know, you're going through mm-hmm. to Alabama, especially when you get Alabama, Florida, Georgia, all those places. Those little roadside stands. Yes, I love those roadside yeah. stands and stuff. We always stop. The world needs more of those. We do need more roadside stands. Yes, I believe. Yeah, I, yeah, it's kind of. But the only thing you know, I have boiled peanuts. What is up with that? No, that, no, they're it, disgusting. I can't even talk about it, so I can't either. It sounds gross. All right. <laughs> they're disgusting. My All dad right. used to stop and get them. I know they're disgusting. Ooh. Okay, and then they said they would buy barrel crackers, and they would stop at little stores, and they would get barrel crackers for four cents a pound, and that was their treat. That was a huge treat What's for a the barrel kid. cracker. I think it's just like saltines that's kept in a big barrel. Yeah, because it wasn't even the good sweet kind, the butter kind. <laughs> no yeah. Ritz available back then. Mm-mm, no club crackers. Mm. All right, so this part kind of broke my heart a little bit. So, because it's about a pet, and I feel like pet stories are the saddest stories. They're the worst, and I'm an animal. Lo- yeah, I'm an animal lover, so it's, so it's difficult. Poor little Lola. She had taken her little pet bantam rooster with her on this trip. And she said that he rode on the coupling pole of the wagon by day. And at night, we tied a string around his leg and tied him to a bush, mm-hmm. which I feel like is bait for a fox or a coyote or something. Yeah. But they didn't want him to wander off, and so they would just tie him to a bush. Oh. And I don't know why they, I guess it was just her little pet that they kept with him. But one morning, after we had driven about four miles. They realized they left the dog. It was a rooster. A but rooster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They missed him four miles later. So they had been in a rush to break camp and had forgotten him. So she said, my brother and one of the other boys went back to get him, but he was gone. Gone as in. But we had met some other, some wagons going east. So we figured no doubt they had found the little rooster. Well, at least they they saved the little rooster. Yeah, we we think. We're going to go with they saved the rooster. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, well, she has she has chickens, so she, you know, I'm thinking, I'm just glad it wasn't a puppy dog. Yeah, here's a story about dogs. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> it's not sad, though. But, uh, so, this is just from her diary. So, she said one evening that they they stopped to make camp, and there were, um, they met two sisters and a brother who had been camped there for a week because their large mother dog was pregnant and due to have puppies and they didn't want to be traveling while she went into labor so they thought we'll just camp here and wait for her to have her puppies but they had were already there a week and um they were planning to wait for another two weeks before they continued west well that was at least nice of them for the doggies Mm -hmm. 
So that way they had the mama dog there and they didn't, the Lola didn't get to see the puppies. They, they went ahead and left the next Mm -hmm. day, but she thinks the puppies were probably born, Mm -hmm. you know, right after that. And then, yeah. So that's neat that there was puppies puppies on the trip. That makes every trip better, right? That makes every trip better. So it said at last they got to the Oklahoma border. So they've made it pretty far. And she calls this a very thrilling day because guess what? There's a lot of in Oklahoma. Um, it's not fireworks. No, but, uh, flour and sugar. Nope. They got that. But this is something you said at the beginning of the show. You bet there was a lot of, and they were going to see them. Indians, Native Uh, Americans. So there she calls them. Are they Abby? Uh, she said they were very friendly and they stood in the doors of their little huts and tents watching us go by. Okay. So she she thought the Indians were great. Well, well yeah, well, Indians mm-hmm. are just like everybody else. They're good ones and bad ones. Oh, yeah, of course. So um, she said, at last they reached the Red River. It was beautiful but treacherous. A young man, his pretty wife, and two little children were waiting to cross. However, the man that owned the ferry told the men folk that it was unsafe. Mm-hmm to try to take the ferry across unless they could move the cable poles back farther as the water had washed out the bank underneath to the extent that it was changing channels. Okay. So what's happening here is those ferries were ran on these cables. The cables went across the river and they had these big poles stunk in by the um, edge of the river to make them go back and forth. Well, I guess the water was kind of out, and it was a little flooded, and it was like changing channels. So the guy running the ferry said the only way we can make this safe is if we move these big poles. Okay. So the men all began helping to move the cable poles, and in so doing, a large bank where the father, the young Mm -hmm. father, had been standing caved in. And he was swept into the swift current, and his body was never seen again. Oh. This was a tragic day for all of us. So she stood there and witnessed this man. They're trying to do the ferry, Hmm. and the whole riverbank just collapses. He goes into the river. His wife, his children are standing there as well. Mm -hmm. They never see him again. Hmm. And now this Young, she calls her the grief-stricken young wife, had little to go on. So the man who owned the ferry bought her wagon and team and what belongings she could not take with her. And they put her and her children on a train and sent her back to Ohio to her people. And then a little extra money was uh, gathered from all the families that were there and sent along with her. Mm-hmm. That's so, so that sad. sad. But, I mean, That's another example sad. of like this was a real risky trip. Ri- I yeah, mean, it could, have, it could have been Lola. It could have just as easy, easily been Lola's yeah. father. It was mm-hmm. just a matter of where they were all standing. Absolutely. And then it, I, I don't know. Like, I have mixed feelings on this. Like, yeah, what an adventure for this family. But also, why was it that important to go risky. visit his brother that you were putting your children and your wife and it's your risky. own lives mm-hmm. in yeah, danger I don't to get do it. this? Yeah, I don't get it either. I'm I just, don't know. I don't know. We're going to take another quick commercial okay. break, and we'll be right back. Do you bowl like this? That's great. Do you bowl like this? That's great, too. That's because whether you're a pro or you just want to have a lot of fun, at Peggle's Silver Dollar Lanes, we have a lane for you. We have galaxy bowling, gaming for kids and adults, Joe's Pizza, a full bar, darts, pool, and fresh and clean bowling shoes. Boy, does that smell nice. So come on down to Pagel Silver Dollar Lanes in Effingham, where we have a lane for you. My name is Robin Stanford. I own Stanford Marketing. It's a promotional products business along with an embroidery business. And we do custom hats, t-shirts, anything, you name it, we can make it. People like that we do stuff in-house and we can actually make things here and that we're not contracting the work out to other places. We never say no. We always try to find a way to do it. If anybody can do it, we can do it. We are hardworking women, that is for sure. Come to Stanford Marketing in Florida for all your custom and promotional needs. Doors, paint, windows, electrical, plumbing, and much more. Oh, yeah. Give me all your guns, too. Don Lucas. What? 
better be dreaming about all the stuff we sell here at Zinc Building Center. Oh, I would. Zinc Building Center in Louisville on Route 45. It's a cool place. Welcome back to By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Today we're talking about a wagon train trip that this uh, family uh, took from the Horde area to Texas in 1898, the Beale family. Um, so they, on the third day of June, they made it to Texas. They made it to her uncle Luke Kincaid's house in Bonham, Texas. So they left on April 28th and they got there on June the 3rd. So wow. really not like as long as you would think, yeah, not as but bad. it was still a tre treacherous uh, yeah. trip. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to be on the road that long. There's days that I don't even want to drive to Effingham. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah, said the family was something. all lined up on the long front porch looking for us. What a happy reunion the family had. Hmm. Uncle Luke's cotton was almost ready to harvest. So the men folk all helped him and we camped there for more than a month. Then we went on to a little town called Lamasco, where my father worked as a carpenter for several weeks. So, okay. So we go there and then, so, cause your money's running out all your supplies. So wherever you're going, you have to stay. Uh huh. So then he got a job as a carpenter to raise money, to raise money, to get back, to get back on the road. I wonder why they just didn't move there. I wonder what kept them apart. Well, I don't if they were willing to make that trip to see this brother, or this family, you'd think that they would want to just stay there. It'd be interesting to dive into the family history, how they got yeah, to Clay County. Yeah, there's a lot of history on where this they family. Came, where they came from. So the 1st of September, so now we're to September, so they stayed so, the whole summer. Uh, yeah. The 1st of September, father sold the wagon, the horse, oh, booger, <laughs> and buggy, and what things we didn't need. Oh, no, I don't think it was that horse, because I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. They and buggy, sold, and yeah, what like... things they didn't need. And then Uncle Luke took our family to Honey Grove, where we began our trip home by rail to Louisville. So then they took Ooh. the train. This whole family took the train back to Smart. Louisville. Okay. They What they did is they got there and mm -hmm. thought, well, that was terrible. Yeah. Now we're going to make some money and get back to home. So her brother, hey, um, uh, Ty, you wow. want to throw a, that picture up there while I continue talking? So her brother, this this is the family here. So we have um, on the front is uh, John Denny and... Um, was this picture this taken is the in John Texas Diddy Beale or is family? This? Uh, this was taken in 1913. So this is about Back 14 or 15, okay. uh, what would that be? Uh, 15 years later. Okay. So front row, left to right, Emma Jane Van Dyke Smith. That's one of the siblings. And then Jane K. Kincaid Beale. That's the, La the, the mom. Mm -hmm. um, Cleon Letha Beale Reigns. And then the dad, J.D. or John Denny Beale. And then Helen Beale. Um, mm -hmm. The second row, left, right, Anna, Lola, Beal, Van Dyke, Sumner, L. Van Dyke. So that's Lola that's writing this, is in the back, in the white shirt, the I white believe. white shirt, okay. Mm -hmm. And then next to her is her husband, Sumner. Okay, and then next to him we have Jesse Irvin Agru, which um, is one of the brothers. And then Alpha B. Beal Phillips Agru, Isaac Grant Beal, and Florence Cecil Beal. Okay, so that's basically her, all of her family and siblings. Hmm. But I don't know that that little bitty girl was named. Well, yeah, I think I did name her Emma, the little Emma. <laughs> the, okay. One of the, the two of the little ones in the front row looked like they're thrilled. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so that's the that's the family. Now, the brother, the one I.G. Beal, he was the one that brought home the horses, Nellie and Booger, mm -hmm. along with the harnesses and the dog Rover back to St. Louis. Um, so one of them by boxcar, I said, Oh, boxcar. Okay. Um, the brother Isaac rode the horses out from St. Louis with their harness on and Rover followed. So they took the, put them in a boxcar, got them to St. Louis, then from St. Louis, then they went to Louisville. And that's just the ones with the, the horses. Yes. The other ones made it all the way back to Clay uh -huh. County. So the dog followed, but his feet got so sore that my brother carried him in front of him on the horse um, because his feet were so sore. They loved Rover. Mm -hmm. So after they had crossed the bridge and reached the outskirts of St. Louis, the horses and the dog sensed that they were going home. He had to tell them to hold back to keep them from mm -hmm. running and wearing themselves out. 
At night, he stayed with farm folks along the way, and when he made the last turn in the road near home, he could no longer hold the horses. Yeah. Both horses broke into a run until they re reached the old barn lot gate, neighing loudly with sides heaving. Rover was barking joyously as the family all ran out to greet them. Our vacation in Texas was over. We were all home again, and mother and father lived here until their deaths. Mother died in 1946 and father in 1951. Hmm. And then she goes on to say, they were the good old days, but I enjoy living in these modern times. <laughs> yep. So that was the trip to Texas by Lola wow. Beale Van Dyke, straight pretty much from her diary. And Lola's the one in the back row there in the white shirt. And then that's her mother and father in the front. I wonder if those are her, like the little girl in yeah. front of her is her child and the little girl I, in front of the other. Have, like, yeah. Because like, families even do that today, but they're, you know. Yeah. I have another picture too, Ty. Um, yeah. This is, uh, this is John, oh. <laughs> John Denny and, and, um, and then the wife, um, my, my mind went blank on her name. Um, Jane. Jane. Yeah. Oh, aren't they cute? Yep, very cute. So he, he kind of reminds me of somebody, but I couldn't quite put my finger on who. You know, it's funny. I mean, it this is like quite an amazing. TV. This is an amazing story, and the family has uh -huh. a long. But you know, because like a lot of times we throw pictures up. It's like okay, I think coming across some uh -huh. of our pictures, like, and I don't recognize them. Uh -huh. They're from Horde. They're from Horde. Is that and the, there's that family? The is it the Bill Van Dyke, like the Bills, Bills and, Van, and Van Dyke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. She uh, she married a Van Dyke. Huh. Mm -hmm. That's just a, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, but I, I am glad though that they made enough money to make it back and yeah, on the so train. Maybe, maybe that was their plan. Take a hard I bet out. it was. I bet it was their, their plan the whole time. Yeah. But interesting. I mean, what a vacation, huh? Well, y'all, I mean, okay. How many times do you have people come visit you? And uh, like by the weekend, you're like, <sighs> yeah. And they stayed for the they whole stayed summer. The whole summer. Of course, back then everything was different too. It makes you wonder where they stayed. How big well, they their camped. Home was. They camped. They just camped the whole time. They just continued to camp. It sounded like. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's very interesting. I would like to know how the brother mm -hmm. got out to Texas. The family got out to. Some it makes you wonder if like they started out in Texas and these guys ventured out here. Yeah. Or if everybody started in Clay County and they and that one went to Texas. I kind of feel like everyone was here and then they went there. Mm-hmm. What do I know? I don't know. I'd have to dig dig into that side of it. But That's I just found her diary page when I was at the Genealogical Society, and I was like, this is super interesting. Mm -hmm. Make a great show. Yeah, I didn't come across that, but yeah, that's that's really yeah, I, I, that's right. We were there a couple of weeks. ago. I love we? to find diaries from the past. Uh huh. I like, wonder what else she wrote. I mean, was, I don't know. Was that just yeah? Because you just found, I mean, it would be interesting mm -hmm. if somebody found that from her diary. What else she wrote about? Right. Yeah. I mean, she made it, it was more like a, just a story she wrote about a remembrance story. So I don't know that she actually had a daily diary or if she just wrote out during that specific time in her life. I don't know. I wonder if that's something people still do, daily diaries. It's called Facebook. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I remember I did you have I remember I had a diary that was locked and everything. I, yeah, I always wanted to buy a diary and I love the idea of a diary, but I did not have the follow through to continue. I yeah. might if you've ever found a diary from my childhood, it might have a one, two entries. I'm on a roll. And then it's like, oh, nope, checked out. Yeah. <laughs> I made it two yeah, days. <laughs> yeah. Good. I had one. Gosh, I wonder whatever happened to that. I bet hmm. that's a hyster hysterical look into your past if you ever find it. It probably would be. I don't even, I can kind of, but like, it was like a little cute, and it had like the little, oh, it had like a little lock and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, I don't know. I, it just makes you wonder how many people actually have. Uh-huh diaries yeah i don't know write down all their thoughts mm -hmm. but right yeah. now you're right that now it just all goes right out on facebook mm -hmm. don't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very yeah. interesting very interesting so you got a quote to i do have a quote. by or a, i do what do you got okay um here we go this one's from osho osho have you ever heard of osho no osho, osho. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, show. Like, oh, show. Uh, oh, show. Okay. Well, oh, he must have been pretty important because he's the only, you know, most people, you know. One name? One name. Yeah. I'm just going to start going by Stacy. 
Stacy. <laughs> we don't need the early wine you, on there. You don't. You you can't because this morning Jack was like, "Mom, are we gonna eat lunch with Beth Cooper today?" Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna eat lunch with Beth Cooper? There's a lot of people that don't call me Beth and they don't call me Cooper. It's all together Beth Cooper, and that's okay. We could just take the space out between Beth and Cooper. This is Beth Cooper. And Beth Cooper. There you go. Okay. This is from Osho. Okay. Experience life in all possible ways: good, bad, bittersweet, dark, light, summer, winter. Experience all the dualities. Don't be afraid of experience because the more experience you have, the more mature you become. No, that's so true. I like that quote. I like that too. I don't know who Osho was. But I don't know who Osho is he's, either. He's got the wisdom. He's got the experience. He's He's been around a little bit. I had a mm-hmm. quote I found the other day that... Um, Did you, you like? Yes, and I saved it, and I don't yeah. remember. I experienced life. Yeah, you have to take you have to take the good with the bad, mm-hmm. the good, the bad, the ugly. That's right. Because that, life isn't always perfect. Even no. we talk about you know this wagon trail. We can't imagine taking a wagon trail like that, and and who knows a hundred years from now, people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, those cars that were on roads. Oh, I know. How did they drive everywhere? They could only go seventy miles an hour. Ah, I bet that took boring. them forever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where that quote went, but yeah, I did save but, a good one the other but day. But seriously, I mean, if you think about that, people mm-hmm. are going to look back. Mm-hmm. But Jim's why I'm like, oh, my gosh, I would have hated to live back then. He's like, Stacy, you wouldn't have known any better. Right. But he's right because they didn't know any different. Mm-hmm. But right. They, but like, it makes you wonder, though, how people are going to look back on us. I just, like, I think about those wagon trails and stuff, and I my mind goes to the bugs because I can't. I don't. Oh. oh, and the ticks. Okay. So we've talked about that on the episode where we talked about the Vincent's trace and how people were exploring and the, and the, and the weeds were, you know, mm. the prairie grasses were tall. Questions I have are, were there not as many ticks back then? Were there ticks, but they did not transmit Lyme's disease, disease like, like they, they, they do, do now. now or, and, or meat allergies like they do now. The tick that Probably makes not. you allergic to meat that it's a lot of people are having that happen to them mm-hmm. these days. Did that not exist back then? I would say not. I don't I think don't, a lot of things exist. I mean, I think man has created their own downfall. But the more we do and the more we, you know. So back then, ticks mm-hmm. were just blood-sucking little pests, and you just plucked them Picked off them and, off went, and off went off and went on, and, went on and you didn't get infected. Would, you didn't get a, a disease from I it. Think. I would think you just, so. You just went on, and it wasn't mm-hmm. as big of a deal. Like, now mm-hmm. I'm like... Ticks freak me out because I'm like, oh, great. Now you're going to have a lifelong disease. You yeah. know? Like, oh, God, help me if I couldn't eat a ribeye again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be, be sad. Yeah, not cool. Yeah. I know. I know a couple people that have that, have I know. that now. I, and they I, can't. I know a couple people like that, too. And it, it's it, really yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. And it yeah. makes me not want to leave town I think I'd, and be out in the woods. Yeah. Like, I, I like the woods, but maybe makes I'll just stay. a little stay, nervous. Yeah, because we don't have ticks at our house well you know and it's the, the more man creates and evolves and does things the more it's like it's good here but now we've just created this all these ripples all these ripples yeah yeah i got can cancer existed but i i you're not i you know I, mm-hmm. cancer is here because of our our food our water our environment all the chemicals our, all i the read chemicals. a report about how like a hundred years ago there was basically like six or seven chemicals that were in mm-hmm. daily use now we can't touch and now nothing. there's like hundreds and hundreds of chemicals in our mm-hmm. lives yeah it's triggering that yeah. yeah food land water air it's all there so on that extremely sad <laughs> note <laughs> We've wandered down a path of <laughs> sadness talking about all of the hey, things that you are right. So what? It doesn't matter as long as you believe in Jesus. Who cares? One day we're all going to see the light. Doesn't That's matter. Right. That's right. So, I, I have no fear of nothing. My hope's in Jesus Christ. So, well, I don't whatever. have any fear of it either, but I don't like ticks. I don't <laughs> want to talk about. <laughs> well, when you get going to heaven, down a- you ask. Dear Jesus. Yes. Why so many ticks? Knock, knock, knock. Hey, Peter, let me in. I got to ask a question about them blood sucking bears. <laughs> I need to know why. I need to know why. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, anyway. because we didn't want you to eat meat anymore, Stacy. Oh, gosh. Your well, cholesterol is high. Who oh, knows? Oh, my gosh. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> so. You can always catch us on Channel 100, Wabash Catch TV. We're on daily at 11 a.m. Our new episodes air on Thursdays and Fridays. If you've missed an episode, you want to see one from the past, they are all on YouTube on our YouTube channel. It's called By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Just go to YouTube.com, type in By the Way with Beth and Stacy. Our channel will pop up. You click on it, and boom, all of our episodes are there. There you're there. You, you can also up. like and follow us on Facebook and reach out to us on email if you have questions, comments, show ideas. Anything like that at by the way with Beth and Stacy at gmail.com. 
And on that's that it. note, that's it for today. And we will catch you next time. God bless you and have a great day.